This is Mary Montgomery for assignment four, looking at part one, question one, creating our new color selected 3D optimized shader. So first we have our HLSL file, uh, where we removed the cam data buffer, which held the view and projection matrices, and we kept the instance data buffer, which will now hold the world view projection matrix, as well as the selected color. Uh, this is also reflected in the vertex shader, which now the output position is just position times our world view projection matrix. Looking at the color selected 3D optimized header file, we are derived from the shader base base class. In private, we have our constants buffer, which holds our WVP matrix and color. We have our pointer to the constant buffer. And then in our public, we have our uh, functions. We have our color selected 3D optimized uh, constructor, our virtual set to context function, and our send WVP color function, which we have implemented in the CPP file. We have our constructor, which creates the input layout and constant buffer. It also sends the file to our shader base class to set the file. Our destructor, which cleans up our com object, send WVP color, which updates the sub resource using our function parameters, and our set to context, which sets our shader to context by calling the base class set to context and set to context VSPS input layout, then also setting our constant buffer to the vertex shader. Uh, looking in our dxapp.h, we have our shader pointer of the correct type, our color selected 3D optimized. And we initialize that in our CPP dxapp class, where we update this to be a new color selected 3D optimized, call the constructor. And then we, in draw, we do the necessary multiplication to get the worldview projection matrix to send with the color selected 3D optimized constant buffer. Uh, so we are making a yellow cube here. And we see that here. Looking at part one, question two, utilizing the shader class from question one, we create a scene with five objects at different positions and minimize the number of matrix multiplications. Um, so I did make changes to my color selected 3D optimized class to minimize those multiplications. We added an internal private matrix variable to store the view times projection matrix internally in the class. And I also added a set view projection a uh, function which takes in the view and projection matrices to set our view proj matrix. This is implemented down here. We're just setting the view projection matrix to our view and projection multiplied together. And then this is also implemented in our color selected 3D optimized send WVP color function, which now we take in the world matrix and we do our internal WVP multiplication within uh, this function before we update the sub resource. So in our DX app, we have all our worlds, uh, we have our models, and we have our color selected 3D optimized shader pointer. In the DX app.cpp, we initialize our color shader. We set it to context since that's the only shader we're using. We can set it in the initialization. Uh, we have our box model, our pyramid model, our worlds, and then we can draw our scene. So first we send the view and projection matrices to get our color selected 3D optimized class to store it for multiplication just when we need it. Then we call and update the sub resource. So we send this worldview projection and color, which right now is just sending the world because the worldview projection multiplication is done inside the color selected class. Uh, so we're rendering our yellow box. We set the box model to context. We render it. Since we're rendering another box, we don't have to set the box model to context again. We just use the new world, new color, render it. Now we render a pyramid, use our new world matrix. This one's hot pink. We have to set it to context since now we're rendering a pyramid rather than the box, render another pyramid, new world, new color, no need to set it to context, just render it, then render a box, send the world, send a color, we need to set it to context since now we're switching back to box from pyramid, render. So these are what our five objects look like rendered out. There they are, all using our color selected 3D optimized shader class. Looking at part one, question three, adding a new pre-made model, unit pyramid repeated texture, that is UV coordinates that create the same texture on all five faces. First in model.h, we need to add this new pre-made model, our unit pyramid repeated texture. Implement that in the model.cpp, have a case for it, which calls our create unit pyramid rep texture, which is defined in our model tools.h class here, and then implemented in our model tools.cpp class here. So we're creating our unit pyramid with repeated textures. So uh, setting up these faces was 
a little hard at first. I definitely, all of my triangles are set up so that it's the top, bottom left, bottom right, going in our counterclockwise order. I knew the top needed the 0.5 somewhere because we were in the middle of the uh, texture image. I definitely spent a lot of time looking at the texture image um, and then eventually figured out it was 0.5, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And it's the same across all because all my triangles are set up the same. But then for the bottom, uh, we don't need to render our separate our triangle separately, uh, we just texture the whole bottom square and can use our square alignment test image. Then in dxapp.cpp, we make sure to load the correct texture file, our alignment test.tga file. Uh, we create our pyramid model and then we render it out. We didn't have to change anything from the demo. Uh, we're just rendering this pyramid that should now have our alignment test uh, texture on all sides. And there it is. Looking at part one, question four, adding a new pre-made model, unit box six face texture with UV coordinates such that a single texture wraps around all six faces. So first in our model.h, we create our new pre-made model, unit box six face texture. Uh, we create a case for it in our model.cpp, which calls our create unit box six face texture function, which is declared in model tools.h and which we implement in modeltools.cpp. So the only difference between this code and the repeated texture code is the UV coordinates in the pvert set function. Um, so first I just kind of drew out the cube face uh, texture image and figured out the actual coordinates of each face, um, which I have written to help me uh, when placing them in the actual set functions. So I kind of just tried to visualize the unit box in space and try to match up where I thought the vertices would line up to this 2D texture image file. Um, so with some guessing and checking, I eventually figured out all of the faces matching them up. And then in our dxapp.cpp file, we make sure we're loading in the correct texture file. I loaded in the cube faces Jaina one because it has those helpful little um, colors of like what face should be connected where. Then we create our unit box six face texture model and everything else is the same. We're just rendering out a, a cube, our unit box. And so we can look. And here's our unit box. Um, so I like these little colors, good indication that I'm doing things right. And there's our box. Looking at part one, question five, create the shader texture class to encapsulate the work needed to set up and control texture.hlsl. This is our texture.hlsl file, and here's our shader texture.h class. So we derive from the shader base class again, and we have our constructor, destructor, our virtual set to context, and other functions, which I'll go over in the CPP file. And then in private, we have our constant buffers gotten from our texture.hlsl file. So we have our cam data and instance data uh, constant buffers. In our CPP class, we have our constructor set the shader to be our texture.hlsl file and then initialize the input layout and constant buffers. We have our destructor, release and delete our com objects. We have our set to context, which calls our shader base class functions, set the VSPS input layouts, and then set the shader texture constant buffers, our two constant buffers. Our set texture resource and sampler, it takes texture as a parameter. So I'm calling uh, the set to context with this texture, uh, utilizing this texture.cpp function here where we set the shader resource and set samplers to our pixel shader. Send cam matrices updates our view projection matrix uh, constant buffer, update the sub resource. Our send world takes in the world matrix parameter, creates our constant buffer and updates the sub resource. dxapp.h, we create our world matrices create our models, create our texture shader, now using our new shader texture class, dxapp.cpp. First, we make our new shader texture objects. We could remove a bunch of code here that's part of our shader base class. So we just create our shader texture object, and we can set that to context since we're only using that shader texture shader class. Here we can load in the textures, preload them before we set any of them to context. We're not sending them yet. That's all done in the draw stage, but we can preload our crate 
texture, our cube face texture, our alignment test texture. We can also preload the models, but wait to send them. So we have our box repeated model, our six face texture, our pyramid repeated texture. Then we initialize our world matrices and then our draw scene. So we are utilizing our shader texture class. So we update the constant buffers. This cam matrices constant buffer only needs to be updated once since those matrices don't change, but we do need to send a new world matrix to update the sub resource with each new object. So our first object, we send a world. Uh, since all of our textures and models are preloaded, we can simply set them to context when they're needed. So first we're setting our create texture to context, then we're setting our box repeated model to context, and we're rendering out our repeated box model with the create texture object. Object two, our six space textured unit box. So first we send the new world to the shader texture constant buffer here, and then we can set our six space texture to context and our P unique uh, box model to context since those are both again preloaded, then we just render it out. Object three, repeated alignment test texture unit pyramid. So first we send the world, update the world constant buffer, then we set the texture to context, our alignment test texture, set to context, and then our set our pyramid repeat model to context. Again, those are both preloaded, so we can just set them to context and draw, and then we render out our pyramid model. And what that looks like is our three separate models with their unique textures, um, all preloaded and just set to context in the draw scene. Looking at further work question one, setting the model to be unit box and applying our different textures with various combinations of the filter address modes and seeing what happens. So first off, our unit box model is created without any associated UV coordinates, meaning its vertices have no position data on the texture. Our unit cube also does not have duplicate vertices to accommodate for the UV texture mapping needed um, on a vertice to store multiple face texture data. Since our set function has a default UV value of 0, 0, our simple unit box model still works to apply the texture at 0, 0 to the vertices of our unit box. This creates just a flat colored box because we're only using the texture at the UV 0, 0 coordinate, not mapping to the UV in any way. Um, so my demo one had the cube face texture, used the point filter, and clamped addressing. So point filter uses the nearest neighbor to determine color. Since we're looking at the zero zero spot in the cube filter texture, we're looking at a white texel. So our unit box is an all white box since every vertex is set to this white color. All of our neighbors are white. Um, clamping, if we have anything outside of our range, we're just clamping to our white texel. texel. So we just get an all white box. Demo two, I use the cube faces texture again linear filter, uh, interpolation, wrap addressing. Linear filter, regardless of the texture size, under magnification will look blurry. However, we are not seeing this since, again, we're only using the zero, zero spot in the cube filter texture, which is just white, so our box is all white since every vertex is white, and interpolated white to white gives us white. Um, I won't even waste the time playing that. All demos simply give us a solid colored unit box because we're only using the texel at zero, zero in the texture at every vertex of our cube. So no point, so no matter the point or linear filter or apply clamp wrap mirror border addressing, our cube always looks the same. Since the zero zero texel at cube faces is white, we get a white box. The zero zero texel at crate faces is light brown, so we get a light brown box. The zero zero texel at text five twelve is red, so we get a red box. Um, we can see these real quick. Um, addressing would usually be determined would usually determine how to repeat the texture, since our UV coordinates are always between zero and one. Any range outside needs to have protocol for how to apply texture. Wrap will cycle the texture anytime you go out of the UV range. Mirror will bounce back and forth when going outside the UV range, so the texture will map 0, 1, then we'll map 1, 0, then back to 0, 1, etc. Border will give you nothing outside of the 0, 1 range, just black nothingness. And clamp, which outside of 0, 1, you clamp the edges to the last values in that 0, 1 range. However, we didn't really see any of this because we are only looking at the 0, 0 texel. So we're just getting solid colors. Looking at further work question two, a performance test. So first we are setting our sync in dxapp.h to zero for no sync. Then I am just going off of your demo, creating the world matrix array. Um, I have our static constant for side count and separation to create this performance structure. We have our models, our texture shader. So I'm using the same code as in part one, question five. 
So uh, in dxapp.cpp, we initialize our world matrix array uh, the same way you did it in the demo. I backed up the camera because I couldn't see most of my structure. And then in our draw scene, I have three different loops, which are just rendering out my three different objects from question five. Uh, so this is rendering out the box repeated model with the crate texture. This is modeling out the six phase textured unit box. And this is rendering out the alignment test textured pyramid. Uh, we're doing extra work with all of these. We're sending the camera matrix every time, setting the world, setting the context um, with each of them when we run it, usually we're looking at like a 60 FPS running this, we are down to like a 10 to 13 FPS. Um, and then we can just look at the CPU usage report, uh, which I ran already. And I can see what changes when I take, you know, the unnecessary send camera matrices out and things like that. But this is helpful to see. So that is looking at my performance.